Welcome, it's Okay at Home DIY and I'm Zaina. Today is the Power Up Challenge and I've always wanted to have a pair of corbels and I want to take you along to show you how I made them. I am just starting out with a piece of scrap wood and I had a diagonal line there and I drew a wavy line just to kind of look like corbels. Now, the power tool I'm using to cut these out with is my jigsaw. This is an electric cord jigsaw and I am using just that little tip on the end to follow my wavy line. I actually did not follow it absolute perfectly, but I did my best. I am not a professional, but an amateur. And I wanted to show you how just a simple little project you can use this tool. Now, a jigsaw is my favorite tool because for one it didn't cost me too much money and for two I can do a lot of versatile things like cut this corbel shape out with. I am using the speed of five and I am also using a wood blade. Those are easy to snap in and snap out and you just can really get the shape you like with this jigsaw. So this was the first corbel and I decided that I'm going to flip it over to the other side and trace out the shape because I had that diagonal line and I thought if I kept to the side of that diagonal line it would be okay. Well the bottom here was just a little off so I decided to line up the diagonals of that bottom and make sure I could get the similar shape. Now these are not absolutely identical but they're very close so they look pleasing to the eye and again I'm taking my jigsaw and I'm just traveling down along that line I try to watch the end there but I also watch the blade of how I cut it so coming around this bend here I didn't follow the line as well as I should and I started to kind of cut into my last little round here instead of turning and that's when I realized if I kept that that pattern I would make a very thin top and it wouldn't match my other one. So I just flipped it around and came back around through here and cut that last finish line. I mentioned it was the power up challenge and here's just a little bit more about it. This is hosted with myself and Sarah over at Can Sarah DIY It. This is a playlist where we have brought to you power tools to inspire you to use them, use what you already have, or even just start using them. But the special part about this playlist, not only is it about power tools, but you can enter to win a $25 gift card when you watch the whole playlist and comment our secret word. I will tell you my secret word in just a little bit. So, of course, no wood project is complete without using a sander. Now, I know that I have used some of the similar tools in the last Power Up challenges, but it really shows you that some of these tools are very good to invest in, like a hand sander. I have been able to do so many DIY projects because I was able to purchase this and get that old junky stuff off and be able to apply a nice smooth paint job. Okay, so what I was showing you on my corbels here is that I wanted to curve the edges of that cut line. I also wanted to make smooth the first, the wavy cut line, the front of that, and then the sides. I wanted to make sure I sanded them and got as much as that old stain off as possible. The straight edges, I was trying not to round off the corners. Looking pretty good so far. So I had to share with you my fail because we can edit these things out, but I thought it'd be kind of funny to show you. I really thought I had this great idea that I'm gonna take this carbonate paper and I'm going to draw this drawing. It's a very simple, simplistic drawing. And he traced it onto the board. Next, I was going to use my Dremel. This is, I don't use my Dremel very often, and I thought, oh, I'm gonna use it for my power-up tool. 
can I inspire everyone to use this Dremel? Well, that's not really how it went. So I'm going to have to do a little more research because I thought you could use the Dremel to do some carving. Or maybe you can. I just, anyway, so I'm trying to carve out this pattern onto the wood. And I'm using like, it looks like a, a rounded end shape. But it's a fail. I ended up just carving it up and it just looked awful. <laughs> So I just covered that all up with wood putty and sanded it off and none the wiser. So the straight edges of my corbels or to frame out my corbels, I'm going to use pieces of crib rail or crib slats. And I, pick up, I picked up a crib off the side of the road years ago and I've just been using the wood from it ever since. I cut these pieces down with my miter saw. I just kind of eyeballed how long I wanted it with one piece and I used that same piece as a template for all of them. Again using my hand sander to get off that brown varnish. Since I am going to paint this I wanted to break up the seal from the varnish before and on one side, I wanted to completely strip all the varnish because I will be using wood glue to bond these to the corbel. Now, if you guys have a favorite power tool, let me know down in the description box below. Maybe I'll be able to use one of them in the future. Okay, coming in, these corbel shapes so far, here is the filled in design. I let it dry and I sanded it down. So none the wiser, right? I am going to, from this point on, adhere the straight pieces with just wood glue and, yes, hot glue. If I was doing this to probably use as regular corbels, I would use a brad nailer or use a drill with some screws. But because I'm using these more as decorative corbels, I felt comfortable with just using this trick of wood glue. Although wood Glue bonding from wood to wood is a very strong bond, a very strong hold. And that's what I really wanted here to have that top piece stripped so that when it bonded, that it would, um, you know, bond well from wood to wood. Now, if you don't get it right the first time, it's okay. I ended up needing to redo this second strip I just wiped off all the wood glue and scraped off all the hot glue and tried again. That's quite all right and lined that up and this part of the corbel is done. So before I move on to the next step, I do want to share with you my secret word. My secret word is a drill press. Do you guys have a drill press? Do you know anyone that has a drill press? I don't own a drill press, but it's definitely on my wish list. I love watching anybody who uses that. So on to the next step of my corbels. I am going to paint these with white chalk paint. If you've watched my channel for any amount of time, you know I use white chalk paint a lot. For one, chalk paint is so... It has such a thick consistency that you do not need to use very many coats. In fact, I just used one coat on my corbels here. Second is I am a plaid ambassador and this is Waverly white chalk paint. Plaid sends me paints that I am able to use in my video and that's such a great way to support plaid, but plaid also supports me so I can continue making things for all of you. So I will let you know that I get my Waverly White Chalk Paint at Walmart. If your Walmart is no longer carrying the Waverly White Chalk Paint, check out walmart.com. You might be even be able to get a good deal on a couple of these paints and have them sent right to your door. So that's just one one place I get my plaid products. Next is, so my corbels really needed something to jazz them up. I wasn't digging just the plain white corbel. So I decided to use this plastic tile from Dollar Tree. And I love, love, love the vintage style of this tile. And I decided just to trace out my shape of my corbel. 
So before I did that, you saw me just cutting off the thin plastic edges so I can actually get it really lined up with that corner. I got some of my purple marker on the edge, so I just went ahead and sanded that off and it gave my little edge a bit of distressing, which was totally fine with me because that farmhouse look is really what I love and what I am going for with these corbels. Another note is when I cut on the line, I'm cutting it on the inside of that line to shorten my my piece up so it gives me just a little bit of an edge for when I put it on just a little bit of a lining now I'm going to come back again and reshape these so I can get that line to go through and these are so easy they're peel and stick but because there is kind of a a lining between the peel and stick I just hot glued that plastic piece down right to that lining and that finished up my corbels. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am so excited to be able to share how I made these with you. Very simple, but I think they are so beautiful. Remember, my secret word is drill press. Make sure you go and click on that link to the playlist. Watch all the videos. Listen for their secret word. Comment that in each comment box. love for you to stick around by subscribing it's free then make sure you click that notification bell so you won't miss a video that i upload in the future hit that like button if you like this content and until the next time everyone you have a good one bye